Scotland's Southwest Coastal 300, episode four. After our little episode with the Grim Reaper, which you will have seen in my last video, we moved on to a wonderful, wonderful campsite, Dunrowin Farm, and I will put a link to their website in the description below. It's only a flat field, but the facilities and everything, well, fantastic. This is really, really a beautiful campsite, and the facilities are beyond belief. They're fantastic. I had a shower in here early this morning, and I couldn't, uh, I couldn't find anything wrong with it at all. But lots right. So let's go in, and I'll show you. Well, first of all. In here there's a, a laundry area, very good indeed, and uh, a disabled toilet there which is for um, family use as well. And then over here we have the gents, the ladies there, and the gents in here. And one or two things I really liked about this light on for a minute so I can part do it. It'll be very clean, all very very clean with toilet cubicles there, key vinyls around the corner. Obviously they don't have those in the ladies. And then wash hand basins. But the wonderful thing about these is each cubicle has its own light. A very big and loads and loads of hooks because, as the lady was saying, uh, you've got so many things to hang up your clothes, your dirty clothes, your clean clothes, your towel, everything else. So um, they've gone over the top grill so you just find one uh, hook, or sometimes even none at all. No. Let me have another door here. I'll take you in there. And this is a, a lounge area for when the weather's bad, I suppose, if you want to come in here. Pool table, armchairs, sofas, table and chairs. It really is absolutely magnificent. Anyway, get back to the van now. I hadn't, hadn't noticed this before. So outside area where you can barbecue around the way. There's also this drying rack uh, for when the weather's fine and the chemical waste disposal point there and this little uh, sand pit. And all for £21 a night, including electricity. And because I couldn't get electricity last night, she actually knocked that off the price. And it wasn't, it wasn't the fact that I hadn't got a cable or anything, just that the socket, for some reason or other, wouldn't take the hole of my plug. She thinks it might have been a snail crept up inside it during the winter. And I'm going to get my husband to come and poke his fingers up and try and pull it out. I didn't want to put my fingers up there. Well, I woke up very early that morning and witnessed a beautiful sunrise. I know it's not good for the weather. Uh, we spent two nights here and uh, while we're waiting or while we're hanging around, let me show you what happens with Mandy's little Roma home. It's a high low and it was high and it's now low. Well, after two nights, and a day of rest, it's time to leave Dunrobin Farm campsite. Definitely first class. Well, that was certainly a great stop off. But now we're headed west to Port Patrick. A drive of just over 35 miles. And 35 miles later, here we are entering Port Patrick. And the port, the village, dates back some 700 years. And was featured in the 1952 film, Hunted starring Dirk Bogard 
and also in the BBC series 2000 Acres of Sky. It was also one of the places that I had listed as a safe haven run to when I set off with my boat from Scotland on my way to Wales before going on to Sweden. But the weather had been kind to me, so uh, I never got to see it. Well, we parked up on the car park on the headland and it would have been a nice place to stop the night but typical of many places around Scotland and other places as well now no overnight camping so we just parked up had a look around and then we were on the way again although it was uh, pretty breezy the uh, the sea was quite calm it was a nice day and if you look far across there you can just make out the Irish coast and there's looking back into the very small but very safe harbour. Well we decided to make Gervin our stopover for the night because there we read that we could stop in the car park. They had dedicated motorhome spots and we we're going to go via Stranraer make a stop off at Niddles, but uh, Mandy doesn't like towns, so we carried on. And we headed up the east coast of Loch Ryan, where there are two ferry terminals, where you take the ferry across to Ireland. Well, it's a pleasant enough drive along the coast, and finally we arrived in Gervan, and the enormous car park where they have dedicated uh, parking bays for motorhomes. So there are two places over there, not very good, but there are two places over there, but they're not all that good. Where? What we might do, if you're allowed to go there overnight, because it said dedicated places for motorhomes. I don't know whether, whether you, we could park somewhere else, I don't know. Well, Mandy went over to have a look at the parking instructions and uh, we eventually decided on these two bays here. They charge £10 a night and you can only pay by going on the internet. Um, which I'd never done before and I didn't really like the experience but now I'm signed up so I'll be able to do it in the future. Well since we were travelling together we thought we might be able to share one bay but... Don't forget they've probably got a rule that you've got to be four metres apart. Yeah probably. So I'm going to have this bay. You're going to have this bay? I'll move the fossil a little bit in this bay then. Yeah, that, yeah, because then it's just four metres. You're right, you're right. Yes, yeah, yeah. So I moved to the other bay so that my accommodation door would be on the right side for Mandy. And we were four metres apart, which is obviously for safety reasons in case of fires. Good thing. Well, once we're all parked up, I took a mural out to the end of the breakwater and looked across at um, Elsa Craig, which is actually a large lump of granite and affectionately known as Paddy's Milestone. And the granite that was quarried here uh, was used to make some of the best curling stones. I sailed past it several times on my way to and from Northern Ireland on my boat, Torcella, and once actually landed just there. But uh, now landing is prohibited because it's a bird sanctuary. And there's a view from the end of the breakwater, looking back into the harbour itself. And it's actually a working fishing port. And I took a ride into the uh, high street, past this rather magnificent looking clock tower. And you can see that the town is looking a little bit run down now. But if you look at the architecture or parts of it, you can see that at one time there was a lot of money here. Because Gervan became well known as a holiday place, for people, especially for people from Glasgow. But they seem to have gone down to Blackpool now.
and then it was back past the harbour, back to the van, and a fish and chip supper. But before supper, Mandy took the dogs for a run on the beach. And down there, many, many years ago, I can remember standing with Dad, Mum, Auntie Gwen and Uncle Tom and Lee and we, uh, we were fishing. <laughs> Eely wheelies come out to play and they never did. Anyway, here we go, I better move, there's a dog coming. Come on girls, come on, let's go. Tonight we're at Girvan and um, if you can just about see, there's the view from uh, from Gwendolyn. <coughs> a better view out this way. And we've got a better view out that way, apparently. And um, and we've got this fish mm -hmm. and chips. I ordered two fish suppers. And to be honest, this this one piece of fish would have been plenty for me. But they give you two. And Michael's got two as well. Mm -hmm. Uh. And I've got mushy peas. And to finish the day, a beautiful sunset over Elsa Craig. That's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. Final episode coming up. BFN. Bye for now.